Welcome to lecture 25. We continue our discussion on Marcus P codes. In particular, we will complete the discussion on LSP coding of univariate codes, which we more or less completed, but there's a lot of bunch of parameters that we did not. We'll do that in the beginning of the lecture. And, and then we we'll see they begin seeing some applications of less decodable codes towards some combinatorial transactions. One of them is actually a problem in your problem set. We will do this later. Then an application towards extractors in your problem set. What we will do in lecture is an application towards expands. Okay, so let's come. We were last time. This is what we were doing last time. Doing this decoding of Univariate multiplicity codes. In particular, we were sort of doing this step, we were doing step two of the algorithm, which was extracting. The polynomial P of X at most the degree D polynomial from Q of X Y naught to Y R given that Q of X P equal to the R of X is identical C. We were in this step. We thought of outline how to do this step last time. Provided certain initial conditions were satisfied. Let's go over that again because we will need it for both parts. We will need that both for the list decodable codes as well as for the application towards unbalanced expanders. So, what was the idea? The idea was we would guess the first few coefficients. Of P, you write P of X in this degree expansion, summation P to the I, X to the I, and going from the zero to D. In particular, we guess the we get P zero, P one, all the way up to P R. This is what we would get, and use. A Hansel lifting like for future for future to obtain the remaining coefficient. And this works if certain quantities, certain quantities are known. And let us see this. In fact, we saw, let's see how to do extract PR plus one from. You know, we did this last time, but I just want to do it again so that we so we wrote this equation. So we had this equation q of x. So the equation we knew it. This is an identity equation. So we, what I want to do is I want to write it just mod. Of x plus derivative all the way up to half the derivative of x small x squared. This is also true. 
So then we wrote this as we could write this as Q of x. Because we're writing up to mod x squared, each of the derivatives px, p1x, p x, px, it's sufficient for us to write that the first two terms. We don't have to go beyond that. So, so anyhow, we will get zero on taking mod x squared. So what the first two terms of is there? px is p0 plus p1x. This is p1x plus 2p2x. In general, so in general, I'm going to be using the fact that pj of x. So what do we have? We have p. P of x is summation p i x bar i i going from zero to d. The j derivative of x. These are the asset derivatives. Will be what? I zero to d. You're going to get i to j d power i x bar i minus j. Usual derivatives will have i to j into j factorial. The only difference between the Hasse derivatives and the you know, regular derivatives, you have i to j into i to j times j factorial. So, the same division by zero is equal to j factorial. By j to i, i to j, I need the first find out the combinatorial number with number which is it, and then go on the calculation. This is just notation for a particular integer. The smaller terms are all zero, so you get the chain, the chain, more. I'm going from zero to d minus j, j plus h to j, and and so in the last term in particular will be e r plus r plus one choose r e r plus one x no, it will be that it will not be zero. That is going to be R2R. Oh, right. Okay. That's actually R1 plus R2R. Yeah, so, so the first term, so that's important. The first term will be exactly X, P0, P1, sorry, this is one. Okay. The Non the constant terms will be P0, P1, P2, it will be exactly those terms. Because of the fact that the corresponding thing will exactly be uh, the corresponding term will exactly be J to J will be the coefficient for each one of them. I is going I is zero for each one of them. So that will be exactly on the constant of this is not the case that we Okay, right now you're expecting the R plus one of the thing. It will always be the case. They, they will be lower order coefficient. We will see that we will see this. That is why I wanted to do this. So let's just see this. Let's look at this particular thing. Now I'm going to apply Taylor. Let's apply Taylor around the point. So apply apply Taylor around the point zero p zero p one p r. Mm -hmm. And the thing to notice about this point, this point is exactly zero p less than or equal to r or at the point c. So exactly that point. Mm -hmm. When you apply Taylor, what do you get over there? You get so let's find call this point. Point point is a bad trend, but keep it as it is. What's what the right name for a problem? Let's kill the video. Gamma. So this is Q gamma plus summation i going from zero to r dou q by dou y i. Evaluated 
the point gamma times the corresponding whatever the corresponding what we have we are going to have in each of these cases we are going to have R plus sorry we are going to have we are going to have P P I P I will come with the coefficient for P I sub one it will come with the coefficient for it I plus yeah. Mm -hmm. Times x that, that's the whole yes one plus x square into something is convert to zero mod x mod x square. Mod x square. Huh? So because you're, there will be higher order terms in the Taylor, but you can just ignore all of them. So you will see what you've done. So you can Hmm. Hmm. Yes, yes, that's 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 all. Huh? The X to be X minus gamma. Huh? Hmm. We are expanding the model. Ah, but X is zero. Yeah. Hmm. I'm expanding around the point zero p zero c one p two. So the additional thing is p one x plus two p. So the two p two x all the way to R. Plus one P R X. That's the additional factor, and both are additional terms at all. This one extra term, which is like row Q by Rho first Yeah, yeah, so Q by yeah. but doesn't matter. I mean, let's just call it I from minus one to so yeah, so you will go to both of it. Row Q by Rho X at some minus X. Yeah, you know. So we do have few gamma with us. That's uh, uh, we have a few gamma can be lower, we can infer it. We have all of these terms. The question is can we infer PR plus one from this equation? And the thing is, can infer PR plus one from star. Provided do Q by do YR at the point gamma times R plus one is not equal to okay. So this is the condition we need. So what we will do is there are two of these terms. So there are two, it's a multiplication of two terms. The first term we will choose it by just ask the question is just R plus one zero. R plus one would be zero in this particular field. We just choose the characteristic to be large enough such that none of these terms will ever happen to be zero. We will this is at least for this one. We choose the characteristic to be large enough that it will be zero. What we have described here, we don't have much control over it. But what we will do is this is a point. All that we wanted was this was the expansion around the point. Around this point, around this. It's clear that this was around this point. Hmm? If it's not around this point, so we will look at the function dou q by dou y r. Hmm? That was now assume it's a non-zero function. Therefore, there is some point in the space, and it's the and the provided degree is less than q. There is some point in the space where it is non-zero. So instead of expanding around. That uh, zero comma that point will expand around the other, uh, other point. So we will do that. So it's the exact same thing. So we will so let's without all the data. Okay, assume that this is so if this were a non-zero point, we would have done exactly the same. But actually, what happens if this were a zero point? So if Q by Rho Y R is not identically zero. Then let's say do q by do y r at x p less than or equal to r x is not identically zero. Then there exists an alpha in the field. This is assuming f q is larger than f q is larger than b. This might not happen. The field that we choose might be larger than the field. Field in which case there might not be such a point. 
So what you do is you, you can always you do a suitable extension of a field. Or about a, you can there exists an alpha and take you q power uh, t. Assuming that g is lying between q power t. Uh, D is less than Q per D. Then there is some extension field in which it can happen. Just choose and know that. So your coefficient will be from that extension field, but you can always eventually you, you will be dealing with coefficient from the second field, but eventually you will be, have only very small. The actual PI will turn out to be taken from the smaller. Hmm? So you, you, can, you can do this by just choosing uh, the, the setting of parameters D such that capital D will be less than Q square. We will see that later. Right now, assuming these letters to come to a party, you can do this. Okay. Okay. Then there is an alpha that that do q by do y r that alpha comma t less than equal to r alpha is non zero and expand and expand around. So when you expand the alpha, you have to take more x minus alpha also. You will be taking more x minus alpha. It's positive the origin which are which are it. <laughs> okay, this is just so about this is for what about this is for extracting just the R plus. One from P zero to P R. In general, what about extracting P K plus R from P zero all the way up to P K plus R minus one? Hmm? The procedure is going to be almost identical. I don't want to write down the query details. What you just do is go go mod. X bar k plus one, x bar k plus one, and let us see. If we go mod x bar k plus one. Let us see what is what is p less than r equal to r. Sorry, just the last one. That will. I just want to look at p r x. I want to do this mod x bar k plus one. Hmm. What was this? This we saw is exactly i is equal to zero to d minus r. R plus one to i plus k. I just copied what was just from there over here. Therefore, if you're going mod x or k plus one, I don't have to go all the way to d minus r, I stop at I stop at k. Okay. And in particular, this will just be P. This will just be P to the R X mod of X per K plus R plus K to R P R plus K X per K. Okay. <laughs> so we will do exactly the same thing as outside over here. We will expand this just like we went mod x square over here. We went mod x square over here. We will go mod right mod x bar k plus one. And 
All I want to notice is all I care is what is the coefficient of this particular term. Hmm? This particular term coefficient. Coefficient of P per R plus K in to X in a two equal to R X mod or K plus one. What will it be? This is going to be it's going to be dou Q by dou by R. Hmm? You will be evaluating it at the point. Hmm? At what point you will be evaluating it at <coughs> x comma p of x mod x per k p one of x mod x per k. On up to PR of X mod X per K times R plus one choose R P power R plus K X per K. Right? So that's the so that's the derivative from Taylor series. This is the derivative from Taylor series. This is the coefficient, and that's the but notice. We only once again we are going mod x bar k plus one. So any this this whole dou q by dou by r itself, if it has any x term, all of those can you only care about the constant term in it because this is going to get multiplied by x power k. This is outside the last term is outside the right? Which term? P r plus q x power k. Yeah, yeah. So this the bracket closes. This is, this is the step, the one derivative of the data series times the extra the delta y. So that's the delta y you're adding. But only the delta y itself has an x part k term. Therefore, even though you are evaluating it at this huge large state, all you really care is about the constant term you are getting because you want you are going to go mod x part k plus more x power k plus. Hmm? Therefore. When you do a constant term, it comes back to, to dou q by dou by r at zero p less than or equal to r zero. Just that term. Sorry, this is not r plus one, this is r plus two. So this is what you are asked. You'll get different the coefficient of it will be different term, but eventually you just care what accompany with R plus K. Therefore, even though they have higher things, the only the thing that will drop out will be only this particular guy. Right? So it's the same, it's the same point which you wanted to be non-zero for P plus P to calculate the R plus one. So this should be non-zero. This is a slightly different term, so we will just choose our we will choose a characteristic of the field to be large enough. Hmm? You now need it to be larger than the degree. Yeah, yeah. Basically, what you want, what you want to can once again can infer can infer p per r plus k gives dou q by dou by r and gamma is non zero and r plus k whose r is non zero. This the first was the existing condition which we had. So we will infer so, uh, so, um, so it works works as long as characteristic of yes is larger than the larger than the degree of the polynomial. If that's the case, every R plus K choose R will be. All the <coughs> So that's the entire extraction. So you so you look at this cube, you look at dou q by dou by r. Is it that one? Uh, <coughs> but 
But then you don't know if there's a non zero point or not. So you go for one point, and so once again, how, how did I extract this? So, what's the extraction location? What will you do? What's the entire process? You have few in your hand. How do you extract the beast from it? Yeah, no, no, but from besides that, we need to have a starting point. Yeah. Huh? No, no, that's no, there are two types. One time, when I need to have gamma in my hand, I need to get a zero. So I need to assume there are two things which we needed over here. One is I need the starting point. Provided has a starting point, provided has a first R plus one coefficient, then I know how to well provided do I do by R gamma is not true. How do I lay my hands on such a gamma? Either you do that. What did we want? We wanted to occupy, we wanted this condition to be true for gamma to be one. But this is not an equation which we have in our hand. Because I can you need P for that equation. No, no. Of course, we will ask. So what we will instead do is we will just go. We know that there is a point in F2 to square. So just choose all possible points in F2 square, F2 square or F2 to the T to the power R plus 2. Take all of them as potential gamma points and for each of those gamma do the whole calculation. Yeah. So, I mean, like if we are guessing what the first, uh, um, I mean, we are guessing P0 to PR any rate. Right? Yeah. So, once you guess P0 to PR, you know what the gamma is. No, you don't know, no. I mean, like if, if, if zero was a valid point, you don't know, you don't know what gamma is. No, 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 no. I just, I don't want to define gamma as to be zero gamma P less than or equal to R at zero. At zero, but that requires the knowledge of all the first. Uh, no, no, no. I'm going to first R thing. No, no, but that is assuming that I know that is assuming that at zero it is non zero. It's not, no, no, no. So that's what I said. So what I'll do is I'll choose this to be my gamma. So I, I'm going to get R plus one field constants, which are going to be P0, P1, all the way to PR. I'm going to run a for loop over all possible choices of these field constants. Fair enough. For every choice of field constants, there's a particular gamma. Now this gamma could be bad. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. You start running the reconstruction procedure. At some point, if you notice that the term that you want to reconstruct its constant vanished. Yeah. You know that choice of P0 to PR was bad. You throw that away, go to an extreme. Oh, your point is that it could be bad for everything. It could be bad for everything because the, the choice of the degree D is not D, the setting of parameters is not smaller than D. Oh, okay. So D might be the two square. D might be as large as this square. Then you take a field yeah. extension and go for all of them doing zero to PR over there and keep doing the same. So the root force thing itself is taking them Q power R plus one. Q power R plus one. But that's not that's for longer than the size of the input. R is constant. You are allowed to run in time. R is going to be a constant. R is going to be a constant. So sorry, can you go over the procedure again? What would you do? You would run over all possible choices of alpha in okay. Let's say t is two. Okay, yeah. d is less smaller than q squared. Right? Mm -hmm. Then what would you do? You would run over all possible choices of alpha from that field. <laughs> you would run for all possible choices of alpha from that field. Huh? This is not even so uh, one second. What, what are you going to do?
So you run over all alphas in that field, plug it into dou q by dou y r, and check whether dou q by dou y r is non-zero for it. Is it not? Is it non-zero for all of them? If it is non-zero for even one of them, you use that as your starting point and you go ahead with your non-zero for all of them. So you go over all possible points in f f f q square to the power r plus one. Oh, you go over f q square plus one plus one. So check if dou q by dou y r is non-zero on any one of them. If it is, that is your you are going to do the whole thing around. That point. Hmm? If not, you replace Q by dou Q by dou y r. You have a, you should have dou Q by dou y r is a substitute for Q. Dou Q by dou y r is another point on which E vanishes. Go to it and redo the same method. You keep on reducing the degree of Q in that problem. The people listening over here. To write it down is going to be painful. So what the point point is over here, it was nice. The choice of gamma and T0 to TR were nice. If it's a different alpha, the, these two are not going to be exactly the same thing. Initial first get this and the subsequent uh, and the and the choice of gamma won't be the same thing. They will be two, they will be two independent setting of parameters, but yet you can work with this. All I'm getting is. You go over all points in FQ to the T to the power R plus 2, evaluate dou Q by dou Y R on it. If it completely vanishes on it, you know that the, the that's a vanishing, that's an identity zero problem. You're going to replace Q by dou Q by dou Y R and work. Otherwise, you do it, take that point and then use that as your starting point and keep going. So let me just say if I can. Yeah. So I have given a polynomial Q. Mm -hmm. So it's an R plus two variate polynomial. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I have a larger one extension. In this case, we have to take it as Q squared. Yeah. And we're just going to find a point on which dou Q by dou Y R was non-zero in this space. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You will get some alpha naught, alpha one, all the rest. They might they might not be. Yeah, yeah. If it is not there, that's a separate thing. But suppose we do find one such alpha. Yeah. What will you do now? That you are going to now recenter things around that other. You change the origin to. Oh, you're going to set that as your origin. That as an origin. Okay. And now you are going to guess R plus one points, which are going to be P0, P0, P0. Yes. So, why should I be the actually more with the detail? While setting, you do not know whether the derivative value. So, at the end of it, you have to check. So the polynomial you get is in the right polynomial. If it's not, you throw it out and keep doing this. But you know that if there were a polynomial, we said all of them would have worked and you would have got them. And your total number of checks is basically uh, uh, your total number of guesses is basically f to the uh, q square to the power r plus two, possibly square, both for the both for the choice of the initial point, point gamma as well as for the coefficient. Why is it useful to take the extension to be larger? So we will choose D to be such that D is not larger than Q. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so that's basically the whole thing will work out if you do this. Let's do parameter one. Parameter setting. We have just two conditions to be satisfied. If you recall, one is that number of constraints should be less than the number of variables. And two is that the degree of the polynomial B should be less than the number of points of agreement into minus in order to tell you that the R function. These were the two constraints that we had. So let's look at both of them. So let's go to one. I want to look. So before one, let's recall this statement. Let's recall this fact that is we are defining MWT. So 
before from the lecture. So W1, W2, WK are positive integers in K. And MWT, we define it as number of A1 to AK. So that summation WI in I is less than equal to T. And we had proved last time that MWT lies between what percent? To scale by and e plus summation w by two scale. Okay, so what we do one. So that was one. What was number of constraints? Number of constraints was exactly number of e e naught up to e r such that e plus summation d minus j j going from 0 to r was less than or equal to i need sorry this was the number of variables that's the number of coefficients of q so we need a lower bound on this because I'm not having to go to apply that. I want a lower bound on the number of variables and an upper bound on the number of constraints in order to ensure that inequality. So a lower bound on this is certainly this is larger than or equal to e choose k. So what is k here? K is r plus two. So uh, hmm? Plus two by product b minus j j going from zero to r is that right? Mm -hmm. So that's just perfect, just bounded by taking to d power r plus two by r plus two factorial product b minus j. Actually, let me even take it up further. This one I'm going to replace this by t power r plus. <coughs> That's okay. Hmm? So certainly a lower bound on this. <coughs> Each of these bounds is certainly. No, no, that part I think is okay. okay. But it's the deep or R plus two that I'm concerned about because I can understand if it was B minus R minus two by R plus two. I mean, because the binomial coefficient looks like D into B minus one all the way to something divided by R minus R plus two minus two. So you need to take the smallest guy power. Sorry, sorry, but both everything all the This was uh, K plus K. Oh, then Remember, this was the number of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so then the final question is B plus R plus 2, 2 is R plus 2. Then B plus R plus 2 is perfectly okay. And this is also from that. Yeah, that was only increasing in the development. So that's. Before our Number of constraints is n times the one for every point data point, n times number of e naught e r, but then e plus summation j equal to this is the multiplicity constraints s minus j times e j is less than n. This we use the other form, this is less than n into 
There is some permission B which let me keep it. N times the R plus two factorial and bring it down again. Here I'm going to put the largest term. The largest term is some n plus b to the power r plus 2. I write down what that b is. Some n plus b to the power r plus 2. And this is here I put the smallest term f minus r to the power r plus 2. R plus 2. <coughs> Fair enough. So where I notice this b is just some function of Yes and R. I'm not going to write it. some quadratic in S and R. I'm not going to write what this. So B is this quantity. All that we want, so if you want number of constraints to be less than number of variables, this is true if and only if B power R plus 2 by R plus 2 factorial by D power R plus 1 is less than or equal to n times n plus or the other way around is greater than or equal to is greater than n times m plus e power r plus 2 by r plus 2 factorial s minus r times r plus 1. Okay. This is the third Satisfied if B by M plus B is greater than greater than what do I want it to be? Small d by S minus R minus R. Small d by S minus R. This is R plus one, R plus two is nonsense. R plus one by R plus two. Where is the N? Where is the N on the right side? The n max to be four with the n to the power one by r plus two. One by r plus two, huh? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hmm? Let's just define this quantity to be. So we will choose our parameters such that d by m plus b is larger than this k. So k is this number. So we s and r will be chosen in some particular fashion. So d is given to us. Yes and R, you will choose it in some fashion uh, and then set that we define A and B and B and M is still at our favor. Once S and R are chosen, B is fixed. We will choose B and M such that this is satisfied. <laughs> and notice then the parameters to set are the parameters to set are which are all the parameters to set. It's B, M, and E. P is the number of points of agreement. These are the three parameters that we have to choose. So, what we want to do is just set n, m to be equal to, and epsilon is going to, there's also going to be an epsilon. So, we we'll do the following for. For every epsilon and zero one. Epsilon is eventually going to be a number that tells you how close you are going to come to capacity. That if you are going to get to 1 by d by Sn minus some epsilon, this won't be exactly that epsilon. So this epsilon will go to 0 as that epsilon goes. For every epsilon goes to 0, we we'll set m to be equal to 2b by epsilon. We we'll put it m to be this one. P I set it to be equal to 
n a times a is a i can do so a a is just to all the defining set t to be 1 plus epsilon times a now if you set it to be and d i will set it to be equal to just tm minus 1 I want to check that for this setting of parameters. We have D is less than Tm and D by M plus B. We need to check that this is actually greater than this. the whole thing has been set up. <clears throat> with this, you can check that that is there. Therefore, both the both the param both the two conditions are there. So one and two are mine. Hmm. This will require a little bit of work, but it's just easy to check even that. I'm going to skip that for now. But the thing to notice is what is what is the what is the decoding rate? The, the multiplicity code only had a parameter S, yeah, which is the multiplicity level. Yeah. So we chose an R. We are also going to choose an S. So, so the point is it's so it's wrong to say that I okay. So I shouldn't be saying that. So let's say we want to get epsilon close to capacity. Mm -hmm. Right? The growing parameters are, I guess, M and uh, stuff like that. But depending on how close you want to go to capacity, you will choose your multiplicity peak faults. I'll choose my multiplicity, I'll choose my R. So, how are S and R currently? S and R? I have to get four. I have to get four. So, it comes and it comes next. So, what will this be for the radius? We are going all the way to 1 minus T by N. We are getting T by N. You know, the argument is T, this is the less decoding radius. So, what is 1 minus T by N? This is by definition, 1 minus 1 plus epsilon times a by n. That's how a by n was that line. Huh? Oh, so so the the is, power. So what is a? a is, let's pick it up from there. Where is a? So it's 1 minus d by s minus r to the power r plus 1 and r plus 2. <laughs> there's n to the power 1 by r plus 2, but there's an n sitting below, so that everything together becomes 1 by n to the power r plus 1 by r plus 2. And there's a 1 plus epsilon offset. Right. Huh? Now, then somehow magically, one, so what is this? This is 1 minus d e by sn, which is the d e by sn is your. What the rate, the rate which you have for d by s n times s by s minus r to the power r plus 1 by r plus 2 into 1 plus epsilon. Why did that one Huh? Why did that? Okay, let me see. Okay. That one plus epsilon is just I like it. Okay. Fine. So I just brought in an s over here. That's all I have done. Because d by s n is the quantity which we are. This is like the rate of the code. So basically, this is 1 minus s by s minus r times rate into r plus 1 by r plus 2 into 1 plus r. So you can you can decode all the way up to this point. I want this point to be as close to 1 minus r as possible. If you choose r small r to be large enough, this is basically this quantity is essentially just this. This doesn't matter. If you choose s to be significantly larger than r, this is also almost one. Huh? Therefore, depending on how close you want to be to the capital R, you choose this exponent. So basically, you want to choose this as if this is equal to this is roughly this is roughly one minus r minus this. <laughs> and again, you can do it with s and r. Basically, you choose you choose. 
R to be sufficiently large, whether this is more or less one. You choose now, once you given R, you choose here to be even larger than S by F minus R basically looks like one. And then also basically say, depending on how close you want to come to capacity, I will set the other values. Uh, I'll choose a large enough multiplicity, and then given that multiplicity, I will choose the large enough R so that everything works. Yeah. But this is all R in its constant in terms of delta. So in the smaller Yeah, yeah, but I, I'm going to do this only for all possible constant D by essence. So the final limit here of will be for every constant rate, there is a multiplicity code with multiple. The large enough multiplicity and this one type of thing. It's, it's not what we really wanted to do, but it said take that multiplicity as the report, but there's a lot of user words to it. Yeah. In the most reasonable range of parameters, yeah. Yeah. In the most reasonable range of parameters, yeah. 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 For, uh, so you have to choose for R to be large enough, and you have to choose it to be even larger than R. So that yes, so R is large enough so that this number looks basically like one. Then X is now considerably larger than R that S minus R is insignificant. S minus R base the R looks insignificant compared to yes. And you can find the perfect for the part of this, which are constant constants in the functions in, in terms of. That's the point. So you do achieve the fact that this was the second of the codes that was found to achieve some arbitrary code to the paper in the fabric. The first one of them is the folded column code, which we haven't discussed in lecture, but it was one. At least the code was introduced in one of the problems. Okay. Any questions on this? If not, we will change topics. Kind of about 20, 20, 20 minutes on the connection of this to combinatory functions. <laughs> So, the heart of all of this is suppose you're given a code C, and I'm going to write the code in a slightly different fashion. Usually, write it as 0, 1 to the k, 2. Well, I'm going to write it, just going to write it as a set of messages. The set of messages I'm going to represent by n. There are n messages. This, this is shorthand for 0, 1 to the k. There are n messages, and, and this is mapping to say sigma to the d. That's the mapping into some four four word space, which is again in some data metric space over some alphabet sigma. And let's assume mod sigma is true. We will I'm going to now I identify M with two times three or three times two. So if you've seen one of the problems in the problem set, this should be familiar. But this is basically I'm going to set up. So given such a code. I'm going to draw a bipartite graph between M and M. <coughs> and the degree, and it will be a, so we should be thinking of uh, capital D as the capital D as the block length. Okay, capital D is the, the block length. Because the point is that's going to become the degree in this graph. The reason I show the D is the N is in this graph that's going to become the degree. And capital N is the number of possible messages. Number of possible messages. 
All of that will be clear when the terminology comes from both the bipartite graph. That's not standard terminology in the case of the board, but let's think of the board that way. Then from this board, let's construct construct this bipartite graph. Which is and it's going to be D left regular. And so sufficient for me to specify gamma going from M cross T to T plus T cross T. N cross T. M. So I'm going to give an M, I'm going to give an I, and I have to do gamma of M comma X. So I'll go to this to just tell you what the code is. So M comma M comma I is going to be mapped to notice M itself is three times Q. So I can think of this M as actually. E times C. This, so the way we map it is the first element will be I itself. There was a typo in your problem that I fixed it now, but I think in the problem that I called this M, not M is a I. And take the code where the code hasn't yet entered the picture, take the code here and output the I position. Okay. So, so the better. Let's stay out of this construction for a while. Let's stay out of this construction. Do you get the construction? What am I doing? I'm just writing the code in a different angle. It's a pictorial representation of it. Hmm? It's a pictorial. So give me any message. If you look at its entire neighborhood, the neighborhood of a message is the code. It's the entire code word, except it, I'm also inputting the coordinate location along with it. I'm giving I. Just to say it, because the entire neighborhood of the message is the four word thing, and that's the graph. <laughs> then I'm putting it there. Basically, the graph will contains on, on the left hand side consists of all messages, on the right hand side consists of four word locations and potential values that those four word locations could have. That's what the right hand side consists of, and a message is and the and the neighborhood of a particular vertex is exactly the code. Okay. And you know that the graph is so depending on so there are various commentaries that you want. This sort of graph will appear quite often when you're trying to one after dispersal, factor, expander. And you can formulate various properties of or samplers, various properties of extractor, expander, samplers, all in terms of. Underlying some coding property of the underlying code that is determined by the that self determining is not. So, in particular, in your problem set, you will show that if this code, if this underlying code was this recoverable with good parameters, then this code, then the object that you construct here is actually a good object. This is exactly what we will be showing in your problem set. Syntactically, give me any code which is discretorable with good parameters, then this bipartite graph that I construct here will be a good extract. What we will see in today's lecture is that we will see something called the zero error discretory. Of C implies expansion of God. So the expansion is part of expansion. What is expansion? That is like every every set of size scale. So let's look at let's make our let's just put one. So I'm going to say and going and giving you a graph L R E with the a, A expander 
if for all s subsets of L mod s less than or equal to k implies the neighborhood of s with of size at least k times mod s. That is, every set of size at least k expands by a factor at least k when it goes to the other. Desired expansion is typically k for some k greater than one plus zero. We want expansion which is larger than one. Hmm. <coughs> Best possible expansion. How large can the expansion be? D. So, A when it's as close to say D times 1 minus delta, where D is the left regularity. D minus 2 is that is. Huh? When D minus 2 is. D minus 1 minus this one is actually equal for an. By quarter graph, huh? <coughs> we will have to go to if we take it and construct that explicitly, we will construct the so coming very close. So, what you will see in the rest of the lecture is the multiplicity code that we constructed just now, and the proof of this equality will actually give you a vertex expander in which uh, D is very close, uh, the expansion factor is very close. You can make it three into one minus. And again, sorted exactly. K, so you will see that K, I and mean, for every K we have, a, you will see the statement of the theorem. So, by the way, this in a general, so that possible expansion, notice this is to be certainly this is easy, M is going to be much larger than M. The notion of unbalanced expander is going to come. When m is significantly smaller than m, that is the right hand side is much is the picture which I have shown. Therefore, even though small sets are expanding, the whole graph is actually a shrinking object. So you can't be expanding for all sets. There will be eventually at some point that will begin contact. So the problem we are going to make the problem harder by talking about unbalanced expander. And by the way, this problem is still open when the degree d is constant. What we will construct is when the degree D is polylogarithmic. So eventually we want to construct an unbalanced expander in which the right hand side is some n, left hand side is considerably smaller, and the degree is constant. On the case 10 or 100 or fixed constant. We don't, this is still an open problem. What we will show is when the degree is something like polylogarithmic. So then this can be used to construct more here, but it's Yeah, yeah. So the thing is cycle. So you, you did use these objects to construct characteristic equals. So basically, these objects are all referring to the same underlying one object. So if you have such things, you can construct those characteristic equals in fact over the Boolean alphabet. And you will construct these objects themselves using these uh, weight polynomial based codes. That's my yeah, It doesn't give you over the same alphabet. Those are used over a smaller alphabet. So I don't know. So the current best construction is what we are going to talk now. This is so what you will see is a construction. I guess these are something that can go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you do a little bit in the parallel. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, it doesn't let you make money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, arbitrages. Yeah. So what we will see is for this observation that these codes lead to some sort of a thing is so unbalanced. See, that is here. These are what I called so loss. So this is this is called lossless expansion. Because there's absolutely no loss in the expansion. So this fact was so it was good for me, woman than Wadam. Who observed that a folded resolvement force or a variant of it 
the risky portability of it actually yields lossless unbalanced expanders. With degree mean for log. Okay. It's not exactly folded bits of input, but a variant of the folded bit from input. So, what we will do today is not take this as a starting object. There was a weekend group uh, just earlier this year in August this year. By Tashmark and Carliner, who showed that multiplicity codes, not a variant, just the standard univariate multiplicity codes, also suffers. And that's what we will see. Okay. So we will just we'll relook our construction and show why the multiple codes that we constructed have this. In particular, we will prove the following you know, for all the GQ. And yes. Such that in fifteen is larger than an input to f plus one, if not smaller than smaller than um, which is smaller larger than the characteristic of the hmm. There exists. And split this graph gamma and gamma. So, what was the set of messages for us here? The set of messages were exactly the D, D polynomials. So, that's x cubed to the d plus one. D is going to be the forward length. That was the end point of evaluation. So, here we will choose the end point of evaluation to be the entire field itself. Okay. And what is what are the this one? You have to give the point of evaluation, the coordinates again, F cubes, and you have to give the derivative. How many derivatives are you giving? You're giving F derivatives, therefore, this is F cube cross F cube. Notice as long as X is smaller than B, this is the constraint B. Because on the right hand side, you have sorry, this is just means no one. Plus one for the original. Huh? This is a plus one for A. Yeah, so that's what there are. When I mean FQ to be, it's it's multiple to yes, so you get everything less than yes. Oh, that, yeah. That's zero. So zero to F minus one, that's yes. And then you give the coordinate also, that's FQ. Therefore, that's the graph. The graph is the graph on the right hand side is FQ to the plus one. The left hand side is that you do S, yes, plus one. And you take a point X and it's mapped to X, comma, P less than S, X. Go to the X, we call it alpha. Okay. Which is a KA expander. For every K greater than zero and K equal to Q minus.
Yeah, so this is num some number. So, by the way, this number which we're going to get here, this is actually going to be the this is a bound on capital D that we're going to get. This is some A being this number. But as long as this number B into F plus 1 by 2, Q, K power 1 by F plus 1, is significantly smaller than Q. There are certain values for K for this is Q. At that those times, you get uh, loss as an unbalanced expander with large. The statement here. The statement here. We'll now go on to see what all the proof is. The proof is more or less going to be. It's going to be one clever idea over what we have seen so far, but it's. You have to take whatever we are seeing so far in the language of expander and then in one clever way. Is the statement clear what we want to do? So we want to show that this code that you get out of the monitor C for long then monitor C code. And on the left hand side, you have all the variable for long and ABP. On the right hand side, you have all the S plus one tuples. You view these tuples are basically a coordinate and a polynomials plus S. Derivative. That's how you're going to view these tuples. And the neighborhood of any polynomial is basically its unit the encoding according to the univariate one. And the claim with this particular graph is a good idea. Okay. So how does the how does how does the proof of any of this go? What do we need to show? We need to show that if you take any set of size at most k. In the left hand side, its neighborhood at the size is at least AK. That's what we need to show. Let's turn it around the other way. Suppose there's a congruent, what we will show, turn it around, we will show that take any set of size AK minus one. We will show the following. So let's let, let me let's construct this. So for any set W, which is Neighbor subset of f of q plus one. Let's define the list of w. These are the set of all polynomials c in f q d plus one, such that gamma of p is contained in w. It's basically all polynomials. Basically, it's this set. So I'm giving you a set w here, and I'm asking you all p such that its entire neighborhood. Is contained in W. In the definition of list of W here. Now, what I want to say is to prove expansion factor of A suffices. To prove the following. For all W of F to the X plus one, such that mod W is less than A K minus one. So this is not, I want to say the so W is a set not uh, A K, it's smaller than A K. I say that this cannot have come from a set of size. It cannot be the neighborhood of the set of this case. In other words, I want to say that if this is the case, I can imply that list of W will be a price that is smaller than this. Yeah, A K less than A equal. So what the huh? So this is I this basically will show that for every k, I will basically show that the statement for every k. For every k, yeah. for every k I will show that uh, through expansion from factor k for set of size k.
suffices to be. Okay. And we will show that this is true for various fields up to this particular. Okay. So this is what we will do. And now this is something very similar. You are given a W. Okay. What you will now do is just give explain it using the Q. So the so the proof of this is going to be almost identical. You are given W. So fine. So the proof of this will be a most step one will be. Find the him. In fact, here we will not even go for extra minus. We just go all the way to s minus one. There, there was an R or something. We find it hmm? such that one for all alpha beta in W, Q of alpha beta is zero. It explains the data. And furthermore, two. What is it? The one d, the y zero, y one, y two are exactly the derivative. So one d, d minus one, all the way up to d minus s minus one, weighted degree of q should be less than or equal to capital. That's going to be step. So just find a q that explains this. Step two, yes, no, at the end of the, what, what will you have, have at the end of this? So the step one and step one works. If number of constraints, what are the number of constraints? Number of constraints, which is exactly the size of W, hmm? is less than or equal to number of variables. What's the number of variables? The number of variables we saw is lower bounded by what is it? D plus D plus R plus two or not R plus two, but D plus two. How many of them are there? F D plus F plus one. No F plus one. Two. No, no, no. So I'm not going, I'm not going all the way to I'm I'm not unlike this multiple case, I'm just setting, I'm not using each Q is going below the multiple. Q is just vanishing at that point. Oh, okay. So the conditions are just Q of alpha beta, not reverse engineering okay. higher order multiple. It will be good to extend this proof. We don't know how to do it. This might be. We don't know how to do this. This proof, I don't know how to do it. So, this is what I have here. So, what is this? S minus one, right? So, this is, I'm going to put it as d power x plus one by x plus one by four here. D power what is it? Yes. Uh, so we will just choose a capital B which is larger than just uh, choose the property. So choose D which is larger than. D power S and W times type of W into S plus one by four into the whole power one by S. So this will be another one this and then that's some words. Now what do you what can you infer at this point for every for every P such that Gamma P is fully contained in W. If you look at this polynomial, R of X we define to be 
q of x e less than s x hmm. we get that for all alpha in hmm, r of alpha is zero hmm. and if uh, d was less than q the d will choose to be subject to the q and d less than q implies all its identity to as as always therefore you have that p satisfies q x p less than x x Okay. Now, if we want to extract the p. Previously, we gave the fairly to you, and you want to know how many such p's are there. Now, previously, we gave a crude upper bound telling you the number of p's is just the number of guesses, the possible number of guesses, which was compute the power uh, r or something, compute the power order r, that was an on this side. That was fine for the listing for research. All you wanted was a listing. But here, I really care. I want to ask how many p's we really care. We need to carefully and we need to care. We need to carefully analyze, carefully find the number of p such that q of x p less than x x is identity. Okay. Okay. So let's stare at this problem. Let's stare at this problem. So what did we need to do this? We needed the starting point. We needed to guess. The, so we call the extraction step. I might take on five minutes, but I'll finish the topic of here. This is exactly what we did. We call extraction of P from Q. We know that we can extract if there exists a point alpha in FQ such that dou Q by here it will be dou by S minus 1 at alpha P less than S of alpha is identity is not equal to if this was true, we could have explained. We could have extracted. Notice this is one of the points we have on our right hand side. Hmm? So we can go. So in the in the bipartite graph that we have, we want to extract. We have Q. There's a W sitting here, and there's a P whose all of its neighborhood is contained over here. Hmm? We don't yet have our hands on P, but we could go over here. We we do have dou P by dou y x minus one over there. And we need to know if there is an alpha of this type. So let's take a particular alpha of this type. Let's go over all the alphas over here. Each of these alpha is a candidate for some P. Let's go over each of these alphas, alpha beta in W. Think of that alpha beta as that term. And let's just check if dou P by dou y x minus one and that alpha beta is not zero. If it is not zero, use that to so what we what did we want? We wanted to lay our hands on one such alpha p. I write the procedure for it. We want to lay our hands on one such alpha. For a p, all the potential alpha is out here. Every such alpha comma beta, this is a potential alpha comma beta. Every such alpha beta is, a, is already over here. Hmm? Is exactly these guys. Hmm? So, what we will do is we will just go over the procedure. I want to say is just going to go over every alpha beta in W. Check if dou Q by dou y s one at that W at that alpha beta is non zero. If it is non zero, we'll extract a P. If it is not, we'll do something. So, the extraction procedure will still do all the guessing and so on. No, no, no. The guessing, the first few S5 small guesses are already sitting here now. I have already guessed P less than. Yes, of alpha, I have guessed the first term. So there's no further guessing need to be obtained over here. So, no, no. so let's go and write the procedure. So, what I will write, 
So, how is that going to be So, so the point is, if you are using, I will use the W itself to do the guessing. I will not search anywhere. So, the extraction, so for, I'm going to write this procedure for the SOR. I'm going to give a W and a Q. And how does it go? Firstly, you will find out the Q is a function. Q is given to be a function of f x y naught all the way up to y s minus one. Hmm. Let s star be the largest variable in zero to s minus one that Q depends on. It could be that Q does not depend on, even last time we had to do, we assumed rho Q by rho yr, we did it. We assumed that the function depends on yr. If it was not, we should have gone to the smaller, right? So here, not, the reason is that this is going to be a recursive procedure, so I will make this explicit over here. So let x star be the largest variable in 0 to f minus 1 that Q depends on. So it might be that there is no variable here. Q is actually just a function of x, not a function of this one. Then there is no P that matters. If no such x star exists, output, output the empty list, tell us the empty list. <coughs> Else, I'm going to do the following. Hmm? We will initialize. There are going to be two types of this. We will initialize L1 to be the empty list. Hmm. I'm going to initialize W1 to be all those alpha betas in W such that rho Q by rho Y S star at alpha beta is not equal to zero. Okay. For each alpha beta in W1, we can now do the extraction procedure. Hmm. Extract P from Q such that the following satisfied P less than S of alpha is equal to beta to q of x p less than s of x if identity is zero and if gamma of p is contained in w add p to the list l1 to keep doing this for each one of them six set W0 to be W minus W1. These are the points in which <coughs> so these are the points for which rho by rho by star is. Hmm? How do I extract the list from there? For there, just for L, set L0 to be the list. We got by solve. If we are giving Q, you know, you give rho Q by rho by S star. And you give W. You know that for all of these points, they let's say let me finish this and then just output the final thing will be just output L1 union. At least morally, you should be convinced that this is the right thing to do. We have to bound the size of the list. But let's see whether why is the right thing to do. Okay with why is the right thing to do. So, sorry, so W1 is so given the given the set W, yeah. You built an explaining polynomial Q. Yes. Okay. And now you are basically saying, let's look at this Q, let's look at uh, the largest variable that the Q depends on. Okay, and finding the, what are all points that uh, don't manage at the derivative. Yes. Okay, that's why I said W1. Yeah. So W0 is W0 is the set of all things where 
The derivative was due with respect to x star was non zero because it depended on x star. But on these points, it happens to be equal. Yes, so those are two separate things. So, the, where you are non zero, you anyway know what to do. You know, you run the reconstruction by you, whatever part of this seems to have its entire image into this, throw it into the yeah. Okay, what do you do? Next? No, now you know that for, for look at any p for which. For any p for which alpha comma p less less than alpha and dou q by dou y s star is zero. The dou the, the dou q by dou y s star is zero at alpha comma p less than s alpha. Mm -hmm. That's the candidate p which you should have extracted. Mm -hmm. huh? But it happened to be that for all those alphas, for all those whole points, alpha comma p less than s alpha, dou q by dou y s star we can give. That's why it didn't go into w1. But for those p's, this is the candidate polynomial. So you could have shrunk your left hand, right hand side from w, w to w0, and the polynomial q from q to dou q by dou y star, and this will extract all of those p's, which you didn't extract in the first place. So, so which are the p's that you extracted in the first step? All p's for which which are the p's that you extracted as a in L1? You have extracted all, you know, all p's are, are solutions of q of x comma p less than x as x is identically zero. All p's satisfy every candidate p in the in list of w satisfies this. You have to extract it. You know you can extract it if there for this p there exists even one alpha such that alpha comma p less than s alpha the concern is a polynomial. Mm -hmm. So there is a point where you decide to add p to your l. Yeah. Only if the neighborhood is contained in w1. Yes. And Sorry, w1, w1, yeah. Yeah. That, is, that is something that I would want on the comma. This is not a. No, no, no. Sorry. I always meant w, but it's not. <laughs> but the point is, I mean, like, I'm just worried about what happens to the recursive location. But this are the position. Let's, let's look at it. So I have extracted all p's for which their neighborhood is contained in w. Now, this is for what when when am I going to call this position exactly when dou q by dou y s star of alpha comma p less than s alpha is equal to zero for all alpha. That's it. If even if there's one alpha for which is not zero, it has been invoked over there. So you know that the entire image of p is sitting over here. Let's look at it. So if, so, so is the is the following modified algorithm because that to me is like is easier to convince myself than it was. What I want to do is I want to build this. I don't I don't want to do this. Each p is contained in W add p to it. Mm -hmm. That's the only step I don't want to do. I'm going to solve whatever p I get. I'm going to keep throwing it into it. Okay. Okay. And then I'll have to make sure that it is a tree and you can see very end and inspect my list. Okay. You know all the polynomials that are completely put down the tree. Put down there. Okay. So here the only thing that was confusing to me was that in the recursive procedure, it may have been that I got a P mm -hmm. in line seven. Mm -hmm. But the neighborhood of P was in W, but not in W. It will be in W0 now because of the fact that because of the fact, because of the way I have set, set it up. But all alpha from P less than alpha alpha is this is zero. So all of those guys are sitting in W0. W0 is the set of all trends for which if all of them will go, it doesn't matter what you do. One of them was available with W1, you would have found it. Even if one, even if there was one non-zero point alpha, something less than alpha, you would have found it out. Only you would have gone into this group, only all of them, therefore, both of the neighborhood of Lama P is sitting in W3. So you can this procedure will find it out. Okay. So far, we are not done. We're just writing properties seem much cleaner. So this property is algorithm. I haven't done anything new over here. I have to bound the list size. I have to bound the list size. I'm already very fast. One okay, but then I've got to bound the list size. So bounding. So bounding this size. And here is the amazing observation of Tashma and Kalanar. So they will prove, they will prove the following claim. That mod L is always less than or equal to size of W by Q minus. 
And let's see, look, the proof is actually extremely simple. The proof is going to be by induction on total degree of, or rather, on induction on what I will call the 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 degree of. What do we know? We know so by induction, by induction we have by induction we have mod of L0 is less than or equal to W0 by Q minus the D. The D could only gone smaller, so it's only it is certainly a bound number. Hmm? So suffice is sufficient for us, suffice is for us to do. For us to do L1 is less than W1 by Q minus G. If we prove this, we will be done because W is exactly sum of W0 plus W1, L is sum of L0 plus L1. So this would have proved. But what is this telling you? This is telling you that not just one, so what so why? Claim is every every point in W1 is letting you extract a P. But there will be multiple points in W1 that extract the same thing. Question is now what is the multiplicity? Hmm? What is the multiplicity? So question is suppose hmm? question, question if I want to ask this for a given P for a given P in L1, how many alpha beta in W1 mm. give rise to it. Hmm? Every alpha beta, rather every alpha p less than s of alpha such that dou q by dou y s star at alpha p less than s alpha is non zero gives rise. Every such alpha gives rise to this. How many such chances are there? This is a polynomial of degree q. Huh? Q might this is a polynomial of what is what is it's a polynomial of degree at most capital D. Huh? We are evaluating at two points. Therefore, there are at least two minus three places where it is non zero. So, for every those places, we are going to extract. That's the whole thing. The degree of the degree of dou q by dou y s and x comma p less than s x is less than or equal to d. Hence, there are at least Q minus G non zero alphas, non zeros of dou Q by dou by S X P less than S. There are at least Q minus D of them. So each of them would have extracted the same thing. So in other words, the left neighborhood is Q, the right of your same Q minus G of them give you back the same thing. Therefore, the expansion is at least a Q minus D factor. So it should be Q, it's Q minus D. As long as D is significantly smaller than Q, you get it. And that's the whole thing. That's the end of it. And it's small L1 plus W1 by Q. It's a very huge observation. Actually, the original Gurufani woman's southern group is also very nice. It's a much cleaner group of. We are part of them to the GUV group. Yeah, sorry for going well over time. Let's talk. It was for a variant of folder deform. Just folder deform before doing our work for them. They have a whole section why I parallel doesn't work. And then contemporary this one. Is the reason they call it that? They call it Parvish quality. Uh, so it's an intermediate between Parvish quality and I thought it's after Parvish. After the UV. No, no, G is after the
Uh, depends on your depends on the people. Okay, let's talk. 